What's up, sons? It's Blind Dog with Summit Tech once again, and today we're going to be taking a look at a new router from ASRock, who for the longest time I had no idea actually made routers, so it's pretty awesome that they do make them. And this one in particular is going to be uh, out of the norm. It's not just a basic Wi-Fi router that you can plug in and connect to the internet with. Well, yes, you can do those things, but it's also an IoT router. Now, I've talked about IoT in the past, specifically in relation to, of course, some cryptocurrency projects, but IoT stands for Internet of Things. So if you're looking for a router that will control things like your Philips Hue bulbs and so on and so forth and various other IR devices, and you want a quick way to do it without having to have multiple devices in your home, such as not only a router, but also like a Philips Hue bridge, and so on and so forth, this might be what you are looking for. Stick around for more. Welcome back. So this version is the baby version. It is the X10 versus the G10, but the two major differences between those is going to be range and speed. So this one is an AC1300, and if you're looking at range, it's not going to cover something like a large house. If you're looking at like a four bedroom house that's over 2000 square foot and your router is in the opposite end of the house and it needs to reach all the way to the other end, you might want to be looking for something with a little bit more range. But that's not the primary selling focus of this router. Now coming in at about $80 on Amazon, which you can use my Amazon affiliate code in the description to go purchase. It's really going to be more on that budget side. If you factor in the cost of something like a Philips Hue bridge, which is going to cost you $50, you're only paying about $30 for the router portion of this, well, IoT router, which is awesome. So budget wise, it makes a lot of sense, especially if you're looking at, you know, trying to get a Wi-Fi signal in something like a condo or an apartment. That's where I would see this really fitting in and being as efficient as possible with some Philips Hue bulbs. The design is quite simple. You're gonna have, of course, the WAN port on the rear to plug into your modem, and then the rest are just going to be your regular LAN ports. There's four of them. You do have two USB 3.0 slots, one on the rear and one on the side. On the rear, you're also gonna have two antennas for the Wi-Fi, as well as you're going to have a reset button and a power button. Moving to the front of the router, you will have your WPS switch in case you want to use that functionality. And you also have a light on the top of it that turns on. Of course, while syncing and setting up, it's red and while not, it is blue. So that pretty much wraps up, of course, the physical aspects of the router. You do have the power, of course, on the rear. Don't let me forget about that. And once you're done with that, getting it all hooked up, we can take a look at the web GUI, which whenever I go and take a look at router reviews, I feel like nobody ever goes into that, and that's the only part I care about. So we're going to actually do a screen share. I'm going to walk you guys through everything in the web GUI, and I think it's even more important for this particular type of router. Okay, so I've set it up to where pretty much only this computer and the various IoT devices I have running on it run on this router and nothing else currently is there. But if we open up a web session, there are two ways to get there. I think the basic easy way standard is the 192.168.1.1. And you'll have to actually be presented initially with like a quick setup guide that will have you set up your password and that sort of thing. If you need to find your original password for it, it's on the bottom of the router. Okay, and so now that we are in the router itself, this is just basically the very basic GUI on the front. It's gonna give you things like your internet connection, where it's connected through. Basically, I don't have it connected specifically through a WAN address. I have it connected through the WAN through a uh, basically a local IP that's serving the internet. We'll go over why that is here in a bit, but if we jump in a little bit further, we'll hop over to advanced. And this is where I'm always interested to see what features this device has. We'll start at the top and work our way down. We have our wireless 2.4 settings. We have our wireless 5G settings. It does support useless stuff there. 
So you do have a guest network both for 2.4 and 5. And here are your WPS settings that you can set up as well. So that's going to cover all of the wireless settings. If there's something missing, let me know what feature you would like to see down in the comment section below. Moving on to our LAN settings, we have our IP address that we can set here in our subnet mask. And we can decide whether or not we want to set it up as a DHCP server and select the domain name. Uh, you have your IPVT settings and your VLAN settings, which you, it does support VLANs, which is awesome. So I believe it's up to four VLANs that it supports. Moving on to WAN, we have our internet connection, which you can set up. Obviously we're on dynamic and we're just serving it off of a VLAN from our router. You have port triggering, port forwarding, DMZ hosting, DDNS, and remote management. IPv6 settings are here. Not a ton of options though. Quality of service it does support. So if you're interested in that, you will have the ability to uh, configure all of your quality of service settings right here. It does support VPN and those VPNs are going to be L2TP and IPsec settings and then it does support open VPN server. It does have parental controls and so if you want to come in here and set parental controls you're basically going to be able to set up a Wi-Fi network for your kids and then from there on out, you can basically uh, restrict what is seen for you know that particular. It's basically a third uh, guest network. Here are all your firewall settings. You have firewall on or off, ping block, port scan block, DOS protection, and UPnP. And it's a, not as robust as I would like to see in the firewall settings let me know what you guys think about it in the comment section you do have a usb like we said earlier you have two usb 3.0 ports on there you can set it up as a usb storage storage server or a media server if you like of course anytime you are going to be setting up a media server directly through your router it typically significantly reduces the performance of whatever drive you're plugging into there, at least in my experience. This one's a little bit better. I didn't go into any in-depth testing. The only reason I can tell you it's a little bit better is it does have that quad-core processor in it, but that quad-core processor will be being put to work pretty heftily on the IoT portions of this router if you are adding a bunch of devices. So you've logged into your new router through the web GUI on your desktop, and you finally have gotten to the exciting part the smart home and you click on the smart home and nothing shows up it just has a list of home sensors and yes my friends that is one of the biggest flaws right off the bat is that none of the smart home portions of this device are controllable through your desktop web app and to actually control it you have to use an iOS or of course Android app that you can download from the App Store and this presents another problem that we'll discuss as well here in just a second so we'll be coming back to the smart home portion on administration you will have your router panel operation mode you can change your password you have your firmware upgrade you have self-healing restore and save options and your system log and that pretty much covers all of the web GUI settings for the ASRock router. And I hope that that portion was helpful. Okay, so now it's time to talk about the Internet of Things portion of this router. All of it's going to have to be controlled through a mobile app, either Android or iOS. And unfortunately, there's no support for controlling it through the standard web GUI. That's a big knockoff for me because I feel like I should be able to control it from of course the web GUI and I realize that there's reasons for it and you can start to see some of the reasons for it right when you start actually configuring it so it does support uh, of course bridged in AP mode so access point mode or bridged as well as router mode and you'll see that we did have it carved off on its own VLAN and I would suggest 
if you're using this purely to control your IoT devices, I would suggest doing that and just putting on a separate VLAN. The other option would be the easiest way to do it if you have a larger house but you just want to use this in particular for your IoT devices, you could put it in AP mode, which is access point, stands for access point, and we'll just pass through, of course, the internet connection through whatever other router you're using. However, when you use AP mode, the IoT portion of the router doesn't work. And while it will show up in red and appear that it's working, it actually, in fact, doesn't work when you load up the mobile app. It says that the router doesn't have an internet connection because whatever sensor is there is basically going through the WAN port, best that I can tell. I have reached out to Azrock to see if that's something that they're working on, and I'll let you guys know either with an annotation or, of course, down in the comment section below when I get a response on that. Other than that, it's pretty simple to go ahead and set up all of the devices you want to set up. I will show you guys here. They have YouTube videos for guides for configuring it all. I don't want to go record my iPhone or Android to show you guys everything, but essentially all you have to do is basically download the app and go through and add each device just like you would if you're adding it to like a Philips Hue bridge. And then all of the selections there for the Philips Hue bulb, for example, that's above me are there. You're able to set it to dim and turn on and off and then you can set up rules. You can set up different rules depending on either time of day or even location, which I found to be the most useful one. So if I have, let, let's say, a Philips Hue bulb and or a whole bunch of them, and when I leave the house, I want them all to turn off, I can basically just drop a pin on my house and within that vicinity, if I leave that vicinity, it will turn off. And when I come back into that vicinity, it will turn on. I have it configured for my office light. And that's been the most useful out of pretty much everything else with this device that I've found. And I'm pretty new to smart homes. So I've recently just gotten the Nest. I do have the Ring doorbell. And then this is my first Philips Hue bulb. So, uh, and it was specifically to test this router. As a router, for the price, it's very good. The, of course, all of the features that I would expect from a router are there. And if there were any missing, of course, there are a couple here and there missing. If there were any missing that you find, of course, that's going to be up to you. And that's why I like to go through, of course, the web GUI there so you guys can see all of the options. As far as an IoT device, this is really the first all-in-one router plus IoT, let's call it bridge for lack of a better term, on the market. And that being said, there are going to be some quirks and things that don't work, like AP mode, for example, which is my biggest complaint. And then, of course, not being able to control it through the web GUI. They put all this work into this app that works great. Why can't we implement that into, of course, the, the standard web GUI? That's, I mean, that's pretty much about it. I think overall, though, if you're looking at, you know, basically Wi-Fi range for an apartment, or a town home or even a small single family home uh, something probably more under i'd say under 1500 square foot you're good to go if you are looking for something for a larger home you might want to take a look at the g10 of course i haven't had a chance to actually test that version of this router but those are the two on the market and the g10 is a little bit wider range the other aspect of this would be using it as a bridge and having your own router and I think that's a valid option if you're only using one of these to control the various IoT devices around your home you can place it where a majority of them are and go from there. I hope this review was helpful be sure to leave a like comment subscribe down below and I will see you next Tuesday.